Okay, we're going to have a look at some roof racks on the Discovery 3, Discovery 4 models today. It seems to me, I'm pretty sure, that the Discovery 3 and the Discovery 4 have exactly the same roof gutter system. Now basically on the market there's two types of rack we've come across. This one is the short rack, okay, which basically you can see there's some little filler plugs here. You can remove the filler plugs and this one clamps in there. So it doesn't cover the front section, so we're calling that the short rack. And this is the second rack. Now some people refer to this as the Discovery 4 rack, but there's no reason why it can't be fitted on the Discovery 3. And as you can see, it's an extended roof rack that comes all the way to the front. Um, it's entirely up to you, depending on what you're carrying, which type you do. But the video we're going to show you in detail today is how to fit this extended type roof rack. Okay, so to fit this extended type roof rack, we've got to remove this, this channel. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove this channel and we're, we're going to cut it here because um, we don't need that bit, but we need this bit. So in order to remove this channel, we've got to remove these blanking plugs. So this first one, I've, I've cheated and I've, I've got it raised a bit, but we'll, we'll show you the idea. So they're basically little fir tree fasteners. So we've got this um, sort of, I'm not sure you can see it from there, but it's like a snake's tongue trim removal tool. Okay, that we put there. And then we're just using something to spread the load. And just push down on the middle there. Now let me bring that over towards the camera. There you go, that's the type of fastener it is, okay? So, we put that one there, and we've got to work along. So let me see, this next one I haven't cheated, but basically I'm going to use my fingernail just to get underneath, to get the tool underneath. Let's see if I can do this, okay? I'm just going to spread the load with this second tool. Okay, push in the middle and ease it, there we go, like a pro. Okay, so they're all the same, the same length. Go. Put those in. Right then. There we go. There, Bob. And there's a fourth one right at the back here. Okay. There we go. So that's all removed. And now we're in a position where we can actually remove, and it just pops up. And there we go, if you can see from when we go, just release the front there. So it comes out quite easy. So it's literally just those clips holding it in. And there's a bit of a, there's some dirt holding it in at the front there. Okay. So you see you've got a bit of a clip at the front there that pops out. But that's that removed. Now what we've got to do next, okay, is there is a dimension in the book, and I'll, I'll show you what that is. But basically it's two finger, two fingers width from this, this point here. So from that fix in there, you want to come just here. And it'll be covered by this section here. So you don't need to do the neatest cut, but we'll, we'll mark that now and show you how we cut What we need to do now, I'll show you. Now for some reason, Land Rover say you've got to measure from this line here, not the very end. But if we put that on the very end, it's 10 millimeters there. And they say it should be 1520 millimeters. Okay, so if we come up here, but we're adding 10 on because we've gone from the end of the rubber. So we're going for 1530. Okay, which is, okay, approximately there. So I did say earlier it was about two fingers width. It, it's actually a little bit closer than that. So you can see basically, it's just past this. If I turn it sideways, you can see you've got the little sort of chicane bit there. It's just it's just short of that. So what we're gonna do, flip it over. And it's just chucked everything off the workbench. Okay, and we're just gonna clamp that gently in there. Now we're gonna try and put it in the vise so it doesn't clamp on the, the rubber top bit, but the, the aluminium bits on the side. Then we're just using a a hacksaw. Okay. okay, right. So 
now we've um, this bit we throw away. The bit we need is the short bit, okay? So we'll go on to the next step now. Okay, what we've got to do now is we've got to drill this. In fact, it's the only hole in the short bit. We've got to drill it out 19 min to 19 millimeters, okay? Now, what we'll do is with the kit, we'll put these 19 millimeter blade drills, um, which I think is a cost effective way of, of drilling it. But what you need to do is put it upside down on a bit of wood. We've put some oil on there to help the cutting, okay? And then we're going to try and. Okay, didn't look the prettiest job, careful because it's, it's sharp, but what we'll do is we'll just push that out now. And that's it, yeah. thank you Tom. Okay. Take that out. Okay. So it's only just the rubber coating on the top that's holding that in. So if I just pull that out. Okay, what we'll do is we'll clean that up and we'll get a file on it. Um, and then that's that bit done. Okay, so we've just got a, a round rat's tail file and we're just going to clean that up. Just deburr that. Yeah, as I said, most of it's just these little bits of rubber, so... That's, that's pretty good. Just grab that last little bit there. Okay, so now we've got a 19 millimeter hole in it. We're ready to go and put this back on the car. Okay, so this is the fitting kit that comes with the kit. Okay, now split it into two halves. That's obviously, this is for doing the right hand bar and the left hand bar, or vice versa. Now, one thing you might not be able to see on the video is these little spaces. But basically, what we've got is we've got four threaded inserts in the roof that we've revealed taking out the filler strip and there there are these that's what these four bolts are for the three rear ones have a spacer and then to keep the spacer on you use this little sort of keeping on washer and then these are the blanks for the top and these three are to cover the other blanks so right what we'll do is we'll, we'll get the bits on the car and we'll show you how that all goes together take the, the bolts drop the bolts through from the top, so they're coming through like so. And what we need to do is fit the little spacer over it, okay, like so. And then we need to put the little keep you on washer on, okay. Just, sorry, my arm might be in the way. You just need to push those, gosh, they are keep you on washers, okay. So we've got that there, okay. We need to do that for all four of these. It might be easier to do this on the bench, but we're keen to get on, so we'll do it on the roof up here. Push that on. One, two, three. Now at this, at this point, we only need to do these back three. Okay, so push that through. So okay, so the keep you on washers just stop it when you lift it up, stop the spacers falling off, and that's all there is to it. And what we've done now is we've reinserted, so this was the bit that we drilled the hole in, the front bit. We've positioned that, so now you can see we've got clearance round there. And the reason we needed to drill that clearance hole is there's a little raised plastic section on the bottom of this foot that needs to sit down through the the cover and rest against the, the mount there. So now we're ready, okay, with all that done, to line up, okay, and start to, to wind these screws in. So don't do them too tight, just get each one engaged a few threads, okay. So we're looking in here, okay, you might not be able to see from that angle. We'll, we'll get Tom down off the ladder now and show you from another angle. 
Okay, so just keep winding these down until you've got them engaged. Okay, you don't want to go too far because you'll limit your movement. And as you work back, you'll struggle to get the, the last one in. Okay, so I've got all those engaged now. Now, okay, they're just starting to get stiff now on the lock. Now, well, a couple of things to, a couple of points to note. You'll see here we've got a rubber channel here. If I just deflect it here, you can see. Now, you've got to make sure as that goes down that it just sits neatly in both sides. And the other thing you've got to watch is at the front there, okay, here, well, th th this rubber channel will, I can slide it backwards and forwards, okay? So before you tighten it up, make sure you push it, both of them, all the way back. So if you zoom back, Tom, if you zoom out, so you're pushing it all the way back so it's lined up here. And then that, what that will enable you to do is when you come to, to fit this front bit here, you won't have an overlap. So you can see there, when we pull that up now, that will just sit. I can't hold it and get my finger in the way. But you'll see that when we push that down, thank you, Tom, that that will be there nicely. So now I'm just going to wind these, start tight in the start tightening these up now now one thing we have got to do is the fourth screw needs to go in the front now that's a little bit different the fourth screw excuse us as we decamp to the front here okay now we've got this is the fitting for the front here so we're going to just push that in through now on this one it's a little bit tight just wind them in okay now and then we can again we can lift it up and just take a look underneath. So we haven't got a spacer on this one. Let's just have a look where he comes. We see that the, and luckily these these screws have got the the point on, so they they give you a lead in. And normally it's pretty good at finding its own thread. There we go. Okay. Okay. So we got all the all the fittings in. Checking all the feet. All the rubbers line up nicely. Okay, now we've still got this middle bit loose. Now we'll, what we'll do is we'll tighten all the bolts and then we'll come back and then just push that back firmly there. You can see you've got some slotted movement on it and we'll, we'll slot that in and get that nice and tight. But the next job is, so rather than you watch me tighten these bolts, I'll tighten these bolts and so I'll come and join So now it's just you. this little sort of cosmetic filler plate we've got to get right. So at the back here, just make sure you get this 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 rubber edge there just tuck that in and then i'm just gonna hold it back and tighten up the the screw at the top here we go okay just to lock that in place okay so you can see there it's got the little rubber the little rubber seal there that matches there and then we've got to put this in now this is a little bit of a trick to this let me put the put the allen key down so obviously it's going to go on here but you've got this wide bit at the back, so you just have to put it in the back, give it a little twist, move it to the front. Okay, now hold on, I've gone too far. Okay, so line the back edge up there before you, you clamp it down. Okay, and then give that a force down. Right, finally, we'll get in there. We've got to put these little blanking plates in so if you look from the top okay obviously check these these internal bolts in here check they're tight the ours were tight when they come in the kit but before you put the blank on everything just give a final check let's check everything's tight and then it's just a question of putting these cover caps in and they, they just push in Like so. Fly along with these. There we go. Two. They're all the same. Right. Right. And then do the last one at the back. Okay. And there we have it. That's the final job done. Obviously, you've got to do the other side. But it takes about 20 minutes aside, it's not too bad at all. We'll do another video to show you how to fit the crossbars in place.